It is day four of Paris Fashion Week, 21st of June, which means it is Dior Day. Now, I have a backstage pass, so we're going to head backstage now and find out what Kim has in store for SS20. Let's go. Hey, Kim. Hi, Kim. How are Um, so in my discussions with Kim about this collaboration and his new kind of um, strategy really with his collaborations at Dior and working with artists, you know, he remarked to me that he wanted to work with artists that he felt Christian Dior, if he was alive today, would follow or, you know, would be interested in and could engage with the house in a kind of new way. Um, and one of our biggest approaches um, in starting this collaboration was to go back and spend a lot of time in the archive. They have the most incredible uh, archive of everything from show materials to prototypes of things that never, you know, saw the light of day. Um, and, you know, in that process we picked out things that spoke to either, you know, one of us. Um, and Kim's insistence was really about taking some of the material quality of my work, the, the crystal material, the manipulation of white as a, as a kind of palette. It's a charm, right, that you wear around your neck, but it's the book uh, cover of uh, Christian Dior's autobiography, and it unfolds into a bracelet. Oh, you remember the clear Yankees hat that I did? Fully clear boot. It's just, like, amazing. So Thibaut, who does all of their um, footwear, I worked on this with him. We worked on the, the B23 with the eroded um, CD that's like puffed out all the same colorway, which is based on the blue calcite uh, crystal. So obviously you got the CD. Right, so the boots, there's interchangeable neoprene inserts. So I made a couple for me that are like hand drawn, you know, on the neoprene, it's just Dior. Yeah, I'm wearing a pair of these tonight. So, you know, when you think about a house like this, and especially Dior, you know, in part of our research, we discovered that, and I didn't know this, Christian Dior had a gallery in Paris uh, before he was working in fashion. And so he was obviously very much interested in art. Um, was one of the first, uh, was the first gallery to exhibit uh, Dali's painting with the melting clocks, right? Um, and I think when you engage with a, an audience that certainly there's a crossover between a Dior audience and an art audience. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I've learned from our friend Larry Warsh is about combining audiences and allowing the work to not only live in an art context, in museums and galleries, right? You reach a, a much more um, broad spectrum of population globally by introducing the work through these other means. You and Ambush, the Wonder Woman that you are. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. How do you feel? I'm feeling really good. I'm super excited. You're always just so graceful, so fresh, like no pressure. It's like a breeze for you. 
I'm having fun, that's yeah. why. <laughs> so talk us through the collection today. What are we looking so, at? As you can see, we have a special collaboration with Daniel Arsham. I tried to capture the same texture and the vibe that he created through his art pieces. So you can see it in matte white, you know, um, in pink, a lot of stones and crystals that we added, like sandblasted. So it's blending seamlessly with the looks and everything. So yeah, it's actually really exciting because it's it's a new texture that you we're bringing to the jewelry we've never done before. So I love it. And your favorite piece? I have to say, there's a um, a bracelet that folds up as a tiny book, but when you open it, it turns into a bracelet. And how does it feel to be working with Kim? Because it must be pretty incredible. Incredible is definitely the word. I'm definitely having fun. Like, you know, I'm learning so much because, you know, it's my first official, like, fashion job, to be honest. So, you know, it's just be at, you know, amazing house like Dior to actually see how everything comes to life. Not just jewelry, but like seeing like how the bag's done, shoes done, and apparel, like, you know, they use very, like, they pretty much use like couture techniques to make their apparels too. So just everything's been just learning. I feel like I'm in school. And like it's incredible for you to work with Kim, I'm sure it's incredible for him to work with you. You are such an inspiration for so many women out there, so thank you so much. Thank you. It's so lovely. Thank you. This is an honor, how are you? Fine, fine, very excited to be here. Yeah, what's going through your head right now? I hope the hats stay on. <laughs> yeah. No, it's funny, even though I've done you know, a million shows, yeah. it, not to say it's like the first time, but I always relax when the last guy comes off the runway. Yeah. I want to know, obviously you've been working with Kim for a while now, um, what's, what's the thing that you're most excited about when it comes to working with Dior? With Kim, I've known him for a long time and we just sort of click together. Maybe it's because it's the surname Jones, but funny enough, we're not related. Yeah, that's um, true, actually. I never thought about that. But I think, you know, what he's doing is amazing. Um, I love the fact that he's taking all those things that Mr. Dior loved himself and then sort of turning it into menswear and making it legible for kids nowadays, for guys nowadays. And it's beautiful to see that mixture of in a funny way uh, 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 of what we imagine to be menswear and what we imagine to be womenswear, all those sort of signs being completely mixed up. So I want to know, when you, when every season when you work with, say you work with Kim, I guess this season um, working with Daniel in particular, how do you approach that? What goes through your head and what kind of, yeah, how do you approach even? Well, um, Kim told me that we were going to work with Daniel, and I'm really a fan. Um, and I also know he's a real hat wearer too, so of course I love him. Um, but we went to visit him in New York. We went there together and went to his studio, and I saw his setup, and I, I talked about hats and hats that he loved, and I developed these ideas. And, you know, he was as into it as I was and as Kim was. So, um, yeah, I mean, every, every season it's a different process. And when you think there's a formula or something, you're probably getting it wrong. I'm so excited to see what you've got in store, so thank you so much. It's so mm. Babaka, yeah. how are you feeling? I'm not too bad, I'm not going to lie, not too bad. Middle of Fashion Week, got Dior coming up, you know, a much anticipated show. Have you tried out your kit yet? Yeah, I'm wearing like a full jumpsuit and I've got those, like they did a collaboration with this brand and I'm wearing like, like big suitcase thing. Yeah? Yeah. And how do you feel? I mean, I'm ready. We're walking on sand though, which is a bit tricky, but I used to play like a lot of, you know, beach volleyball, so I'm used to it. What do you love about Dior? Man, I love, obviously, when Kim came, like, he added a bit of, he put his own twist to it, you know, with the whole fonts and that. Like, it's, 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 it's very fun. Like, compared, there's a lot of Paris shows, a lot of Milan shows where it's, it's quite serious and that, but, do you know what I mean? Look at, the, look at the crazy sets. Like, the walks that we do are out of the ordinary. Do you know what I mean? So, I just like, I, I just like, you know the the rule breaking and cry, like making something new and like it's always I don't know man it feels fresh new spontaneous like yeah. Lewis, you're about to walk the runway for Dior SS20. How do you feel? Um, I'm quite nervous because of the sand, but other than that, that's quite chill. So tell me a little bit a little bit about your look today. My look, I have like a pink bomber jacket and beige trousers and beige shoes. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. 
It must be incredible to be walking for Kim's shows just because the energy is epic, right? Yeah, like the people are so nice. It's so chill atmosphere, so you're not, you don't get too nervous because everyone's so nice. Everyone's just chilling. <laughs> well, all the best of luck. It's lovely Thank to you chat very to much. you. Thank you. So, Valentina, I just saw you sat on the steps before Dior. Uh, what is it like walking for Dior? Oh, um, as a French uh, person, it's uh, such an honor to, to do this because it's a really huge French um, family, you know, house, you can say. So, yeah, it's an honor and I'm always, yeah, it's always a pleasure to do this. So, tell me, what is your look today? Uh, I have a, a, like a see-through shirt with a beautiful kind of blue flower, you're gonna see it. So obviously Kim's been at Dior for just over a year now. Yeah. What are your feelings on this? He's done an incredible job, right? Of course, it's like there is always um, the really cla classy, you know, uh, the, the um, Joe spirit with the Kim touch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is um, the hardest thing to do when you go into a big house like Dior, is to respect the house and to to make your touch, to put your touch on it. Uh, as a model, I wish that they could have the chance to work with him because he's really lovely with us, he takes care of us, and I think it's really important in the fashion world to have designers like him. It's really important. That's it. It's so lovely to meet Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Tell me, how was the show? It was sick. Yeah. Um, Arsham, um, Kim, and obviously Matthew Williams, Yoon, everyone, that team there is, that team there is unstoppable, man. Big up Dior, man, they're going on 226. Two, and thank you so much for thank everything you. you're doing. Dior SS20, yeah. how was it? It was excellent. Uh, first and foremost, like the production was incredible, beautiful, felt very effortless, and it felt like high art. Obviously, Daniel Arsham is just exceptional. But then kind of in, in conjunction or against the clothing, it just felt like a whole different world. So Kim killed it, man. Beautiful, beautiful collection. I'm super excited to wear it. So. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks. Enjoyed the match. SS20 for Dior, how do you feel about it? You know, Daniel Arsham is an artist that followed pretty much um, most of his career through some architecture and now, and I think, you know, seeing him come up and uh, just watching his evolution and progression, seeing him work with a luxury brand at the level of Dior is really amazing. And for Dior, I think, with the, ex uh, with the capabilities of the Atelier are, the way that they were just able to recreate his work in clothing but also in accessories like uh, you know you might not be able to tell but some of the sneakers are inspired by the blue calcite and the rose quartz that actually colors Daniel's works naturally like there's this crazy basketball case that is also a necklace like you can kill the accessories and it opens up and it like has these pieces of crystal in it I mean the setting was really good the soundtrack was amazing it was like uh, some Malcolm McLaren Honey Dijon did it as again 
So it was a good throwback, and I think, you know, really speaks to the similarities between what Daniel does as an artist, which is, you know, sort of a time traveler. He, like, uh, looks at objects of the present and puts them in a future context. And, you know, Kim, as a designer at a house, is kind of always having one foot in the past, looking at archives and really thinking how to make it happen now. And, you know, I spoke with him backstage, and most people don't know that Mr. Dior also had a gallery. You know, and that was, like, a big inspiration for why Kim works with artists today, and it makes sense and I think it speaks to you know young consumers and older consumers and finding new ways to tell you know stories over and over. And like you said you went backstage earlier um, today I want to know you got a first look at some of the pieces um, what piece really impressed you? I've got to say it's these uh, clear hiking boots I, I don't know what they're made out of but they have like these crazy uh, neoprene sock liners that are interchangeable that mimic different aspects of Daniel's work those are definitely a must cop. And let's talk about the way that the lines have been blurred in that sense of like sportswear and looks. You know, when I wrote a cover story with Kim, he sort of said the term streetwear is kind of outdated. And, you know, I think we can safely say it is obsolete. I mean, it's just casual sportswear worn on the street. I mean, you know, we live in a world of $800 hoodies and amazing Uniqlo collections. It's that high-low dichotomy, but I think the intent of the design and uh, the collaboration with artists like Daniel Arsha, Hajime Soriyama, and Cause really elevate, you know, humble graphics to a different level, and then the way that they spread into the rest of a line really manifests in, like, a new sense of luxury. So for kids out there watching this film, watching what, watching what we're talking about, um, what do you hope that they take away from this collection? I think it's to really just know about what value is, right? It's like this whole interplay between art and luxury, I think is a pretty interesting road that we're taking. I mean, you know, it's not like you can just collaborate with one artist and all of a sudden it's like cool or that, you know, collaborating with artists is the way to instantly build your credibility. I think it just has to make sense and it speaks to, you know, being authentic to who you are if you're an aspiring designer or an aspiring label and just working with your friends and engaging your local community. I mean, Kim and Daniel were friends before they were collaborators, and I think that's really what it is. It has to be genuine, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. How is everyone? The fantastic trio, we are yeah. good. We are outside in the busiest street. Yeah, that yeah. too. <laughs> we're tired, and like Atif said, we're outside of the busiest street of Paris, if you look around, but. And tonight it's Fête de la Musique. We're the road, Fête de la so music. that's fine. But you've just seen one of the most, well, the most luxurious show in the Fashion Week schedule. How was it? I mean, it was minimal, so that's right up my alley. So I liked it, but I heard some other opinions, Mr. I like the accessories. The tailoring is beautiful. It's not personally my taste, but the, the first look, wide leg pants, down with that. Okay. Down with that. With the wide leg pant, yeah. you're happy. I'm happy. Okay. Yeah. I was just very into, um, I like Kim in the spring, like I didn't necessarily like his last collection, um, I feel like it was too dark, too heavy, and it didn't, it just seemed like too much, but I think when he goes with his like pastel colorways and like, he keeps it very light with the like um, sheer, the flowy pieces, it always worked. And the accessories this season were, yeah, like Atip said, were really great, like was, the, the tiny Ramoa bag, collab. The Ramoa collab. The tiny bags and all the weird shapes were very cool. I really enjoyed that. Nice. Um, I want to talk about the Dior crew. So obviously we have we have you now, we have Kim himself, and we have Matthew Williams. Who do you think might be next? Ooh, 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 I don't know. That is that is a TBC. I don't know. I, I would like to see him work with a musician actually, because he always has Skepta was there, Jay Belvin was there, Miguel, so many other artists. It would be quite sick to actually see that crossover well, between music and side. Someone that's a bit more like fine art. I don't know. Would be very interesting. I want to see Sean Stussy do something with Kim. Like he's yeah. there. Like What's no, he there? he's there. No one saw him. Did you no, see him? I saw him. I was like standing right back next behind him. That like, would be iconic. If he would do something with Stussy, that's the next. Mark our words, Kim. That's the one. Surfboard. Surfboard. <laughs> Final words that you want to say to Kim. Well done. Amazing as always. Keep it up and please drop your price points for something so I can buy into it one day. Just like send me a bag. Just send me a bag. Send me please. that. Shit. Send us that. Shit. Come on. Do you want to be sent anything? No. An exclusive custom-made poncho? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no Mic drop. So day four is over. And um, I'm a little bit tired, but it was totally worth it. Completely epic. 
tomorrow, keep it locked because we're going to be checking out the new stores, the new brands that Heisner Bighty is into, the ones that we love. We're going to give them a shout out. And remember to tell us below what you liked, what you didn't like. Tell us, let us know. Bye.